For all of Bleach's reputation, if I were to ask the majority if Bleach was a sad anime or made you cry per se, I would imagine the large amount of you would say, no. There have been many shown in the series which strikes really to the heartstrings, whether that's Luffy losing his crew or Jiraiya's death. These scenes seem to have much more of a reactionary response to its viewer. But Bleach? Bleach, while it can make its audience tear up, I don't think it's the type of sadness that Bleach wants to incite, but more of a hopelessness or even depression, for example. So let's give you my top moments in Bleach that I feel are the saddest. But wait, before we get into today's video, I am excited to talk about today's sponsor, Zen Market. As you can see, I've been using Zen Market since 2016, and it is generally a good service that I use. It takes a lot of the stress of not being able to buy all my merchandise from Japan, exclusive or not. Zen Market is a website that offers you the ability to buy anything you like from Japan with its worldwide shipping and has a customer support in over 10 native languages. It has a low flat rate of 300 yen per item and offers multiple payment options such as PayPal and even crypto. You can bid on the Japanese Yahoo listings and buy from exclusive Japanese retailers. To give an example, I requested for a reservation from Animate for the latest Bleach Brave Souls art book. You can also submit cool photos of the items you purchased to win free account credit. They also give cash back on Wednesdays and Thursdays, so go over to the link in the description to check it out, especially if you're interested in buying any exclusive and rare Bleach items pre-orders for the future merch or any other series in general that you might find uh, interesting to you. And of course, be sure to check out any of the other items that I recommend on my page. So again, big shout outs to Zen Market for hooking us up and uh, let's get back into the video. It wouldn't be right to start off this list without a banger, and I have to kind of cheat and mention two scenarios as the theme and impact of this fight really gives you a mix of emotions. First and foremost, the state of hopelessness you get when you see Ichigo get manhandled then to get blasted in the chest really tells the audience that Okiro was in fact a different breed of opposition that we had in fact come to be accustomed to. And Ichigo generally died here, but what really hit here was the voice acting of Orihime. Sure, there's the meme that she says Ichigo's his name a bit too much. However, in the manga, it's completely different and honestly, someone would really act like this given Orihime's position. Fast forward to this and we go and have all cures his death. And we get some really good poetry about the context of his lack of understanding about what the heart is. He always believed that the heart was something that you could actually see. But during his fights with Ichigo, he slowly understood human emotions. All this while slowly decaying into nothingness, which is ironic, seeing as he is a very nihilistic creature that really didn't see a problem with death. Sad, yet a beautiful send-off. <sighs> Yeah, I, I know, another Ichigo moment, but I think that's what makes our main character so well-rounded. Now, I understand Ichigo trains, gets badass, gets a new style, and then slaps Aizen. However, once you look beyond the eye candy of the cool sword swingings, blood, and environmental destruction after a massive nuke had popped off, you start to understand Ichigo's mentality throughout this fight. You focus on his body language, his facial reactions, and tone of voice, and what he is essentially sacrificing to get to this point. Both anime and manga reinforce this through Ichigo and Zangetsu's flashback of them fighting and through all the chaos during this intense fight. Our main character is trying to hear his enemies' his sword, what it's feeling and trying to understand the enemy before making the final move. So he sacrifices everything, the power to protect, and while this hits him, he still manages to smile when he sees his loved ones. And that in and of itself is a sad moment because unless you are a sociopath, you should be able to relate to this level of feeling and burden. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
spoiler alert, Gein's death goes without saying. This is one of the moments that has one of the most internal impacts as well as straight up surface level emotional impact to the audience. It gets instant gratification from the writer's perspective and it's what makes this plot twist so fulfilling. Through the majority of the series we have come to enjoy a love-hate relationship with Gein. He has a character design that's aesthetic as well as a solid character foundation with a motive that drove the audience's attention to him. He was an incredibly strong character and was one of the only ones that refused holification from Aizen. So when we come to find out he got close to Aizen since he was a kid to defeat him, his story is kind of tragic. Add the romance element that he did this for Rongiku and now you have a character you feel sorry for, but also Rongiku at the same time, who was also devoted to him despite how the world viewed him. <laughs> I just had to bring back Ichigo back again for this heartbreaking moment in the Fullbringer arc. If you're a Bleach fan, you most likely know which one I'm going to say. After the fight with Aizen, Ichigo had accepted his fate to lose his powers. In the Fullbringer arc, it's about reflection and rebooting Ichigo's experiences and understanding how he deals with his normal life. It's quite melancholy seeing him go day to day acting as if something that was important in his life wasn't really there anymore. A few friends get hurt and people are in danger and he finds a way to get a shred of power back, just enough to protect where it matters. However, once he comes to the terms that he misses his power that he once resented and gains a new strength, it's taken from him. After, the enemy manipulates his whole family to turn against him first, naturally. But he is stabbed, robbed and left feeling hopeless and broken down after giving a shred of hope. The voice actor Morita really does a great job at showcasing Ichigo's his mind just crashing crash and burn, and it's a sad moment that truly gives me goosebumps. And last but not least, Masaki's death. The reason Bleach started, the reason Ichigo has such a revenge and truth-seeking nature disguised as a fake heroism for his loved ones. You don't really feel sadness about Masaki's death per se, we barely got introduced to the main characters at this point. However, Masaki's death is always lingering, always spoken about and always made a presence. Seeing memories in the rain arc was personal for Ichigo, but we felt redemption rather than sadness. However, it wasn't until everything but the rain that we start to feel more sad for Ichigo, understanding why his mother died, who to blame and why he is the way he is. She wasn't someone that was meant to die and for all of us deep down felt secondhand sadness as we can all really imagine how Ichigo would feel in his shoes. It's very a realistic scenario that brings a relatable question to light and thus giving the audience a sense of gloom. So hopefully you liked my different take on how Bleach deals with sadness and what I generally felt was really sad within the series and how you kind of resonate with that. Tell me all guys' thoughts in the comment section down below. Hopefully we can reevaluate this when the anime comes back and we get to see, you know, all the music and, and animation come to light to see which really hits. I feel like Yamamoto's is definitely going to be up there when uh, when that happens. But again, I'm going to catch you guys later. You guys, of course, have this fine David Hansen and as always, people, peace out.